Hey guys, this is Tom from the Small Scale Life Podcast and smallscalelife.com. Welcome to the garden. Today we're going to do a garden update for the 15th of August, middle of August 2016. I have another video that's all about the wicking beds and the hybrid rain gutter grow system here on the channel. So if you want to see that, go over there, check that out. Also, this is a companion video to the Small Scale, uh, small scale Life uh, podcast and blog post. So if you want to read and see some pictures, feel free to go there. We do have a little bit of airplane traffic coming in this afternoon, so just bear with me. Um, but welcome to the garden. I'm back here on my uh, little bench, just kind of checking out everything. Uh, just got off work and just taking a look. Uh, I'll walk you through the gardens here. We've got some interesting developments that have happened over the past uh, couple weeks and uh, some changes already and you know with changes in the garden uh, none of them are good but um, you know I've cropped some things out gotten rid of some things and we're gearing up for fall now believe it or not even though I've got summer uh, harvest coming so um, here we go so stay tuned let's go let's do this our first bed that we're going to talk about is our gorilla garden. I've got three zucchini plants that are in this bed. And um, you can see that I do get buds, but I have had no fruit. I guess there's a potential one growing there. But really, where is the zucchini? I'm really looking forward to having some zucchini, and um, I don't see much of it coming. So. Observant eyes, and those of you who have been following me on Facebook and Instagram, will know what exactly what I'm talking about. Look at the stems here. These stems are blasted apart, just totally annihilated on all three plants. And for those of you who are gardeners and have dealt with this before, you know what the culprit is. This is the work of the squash borer. And it's a little caterpillar, kind of looks like a grub and it just tunnels right into your, to your, um, your stem of your squash or zucchini and has a field day and a party and just eats, eats everything in sight. So the way that I, told, I, I could tell was that I saw the holes in the stems and I actually did find a squash borer and I took care of that yesterday. But remedies for this, I don't know. We'll see if, I can sur if these plants will survive. I'm going to mound some dirt here and we'll see if it roots. But I would really like some zucchini this year for, of my own. We'll just see. These, <laughs> these, these stems are just blasted. It's just too bad. Some nice plants with a lot of nice buds. And uh, ugh, it's just disappointing. So that's failure number one. I should have been checking the stems. I didn't even think about it. That's on me. So, you know, what are you going to do? Check your stems. That is the key. Check your stems. Let's uh, go over here to beds four and five in my vertical garden, and you can see there's something missing. A lot of something missing. I had about 150 basil plants going in, in the vertical garden here, and also this bed, and along my tomatoes here in bed one, and all of them have been removed, totally gone. Um, it got blight, they got mildew. Uh, and so they need to be removed. There's just not much to be salvaged. So everything is clear. I'm ready for fall. And uh, this will allow me to do some maintenance on these vertical gardens as well. I want to put a vertical, a vertical support here. You can see that they tip forward, especially loaded with plants and soil. And so when it rains, these tip forward. I'd rather have them a little more sturdy. So I'll put in a vertical support um, and then use a screw, a deck screw, to tack them up. So it just is more stable and support with support, especially with soil and plants. But I'm very happy so far with the vertical garden. It's just unfortunate that I lost 150 basil plants to downy mildew. So nothing you can do about it. I also have my parsley, and it's going really, really well. I'm very pleased with it. So um, you can see one of the basil leaf there, but the parsley is rocking. So we'll crop this out and uh, gear up for fall. A lot of, a lot of parsley, man. 
Uh, I do have a couple volunteer, well, I've made them volunteer tomato plants. This is a uh, San Marzano, it's getting big in size. We're starting to see that we're gonna get some, some uh, tomatoes here. This is a sucker. You can tell you have the main stem, you have a branch, and this guy comes out of the armpit. So that is a sucker that needs to be removed. Here's another sucker, remove that. Another sucker, remove that. And really the idea, here's another one. Really the idea is I'm trying to channel the energy to the stem and to grow some more tomatoes. So prune your suckers. So those are beds four and five. Well, let's get back to bed one. <sighs> yes, tomato heaven. Um, I had some change up here and I will need to water, but uh, did some changes. I got rid of one alpaca Roma tomato because it was not productive. Uh, but these are the alpaca Romas. These are a favorite of mine. I really like them. They're great for baking. Funny they have these spots on them. I'm gonna have to check that. Um, but these are great plants. They're, they're being pretty productive. Got some that are starting to get ripe. I'm hoping for some more clusters. Yep, here we go. Some more clusters are forming up. So pretty happy so far. And again, I've got some suckers to take care of here this afternoon. This is a volunteer that I put in. I took out an unproductive Apacaroma. It's pretty sad right now. So I'll give him a good dose of water. Just transferred him in. Um, I'll give him a good dose of water and see if I can turn that one around. Mosquitoes out here too. Here's another Apacaroma looking good looking real good I've got my Amish paste this one is about ripe but um, some good clusters of Amish paste tomatoes hoping I get some more um, they've really gotten tall these are probably over eight feet tall but um, I'm gonna trim the growing tip here and try to force more tomato production I don't want them tall I want them productive then I'm back down to the Romas. So the Romas are setting up some fruit, real nice. Excellent. And here's some cherry tomatoes coming right along. Oh, there's a pollinator. Good. Here's some cucumbers to give you an example of the difference between traditional planting and that wicking bed. Just not as many cucumbers going on here. Of course, this is in the shade, this was a little different, but I had some extra cucumbers and threw them in here just to see what was gonna happen. All right, this bed, number two, is kind of my chaotic mess. Um, I've got some tomatoes planted on the outside, Ch more cherry tomatoes and more San Marzanos that are starting to set fruit. There's a couple here, so that makes me happy. I've got some peas that are still producing, sugar snap peas, this late in the season. Some green beans down there that are also producing some bush beans. And I originally thought that I had a, uh, <laughs> that I had just planted bush beans in here, but no, I actually have pole beans. So I've got a lot of stuff going on in this garden. I've got, <clears throat> cherry tomatoes on the outside. I've got the sugar snap peas that are still product producing in the middle. Some of them are starting to die out. I've got some tomato plants that are starting to get productive. And more sugar snap peas here. And then <laughs> the bush beans, or the, the, the pole beans, which are starting to form beans. On my travels, I've seen some ways to manage pole beans. I just don't want them to get up in the lilac like they did last year. So I'll keep my eye on that. I might have to snip these guys, or at least try to curb them. Oops, I just broke that one. <clears throat> so we'll see. It's all plant management from here. But these plants, the bean plants are incredibly productive. They just need proper management. And on my travels, I did see some ways to, 
to manage these. Got another tomato plant here starting to set. That's great. I have some trimming to do on this one. And then another one starting to set over here. Another sucker right there. Main stem, branch, sucker. <laughs> Things are going to town. Now, usually when I see this kind of activity on a leaf, I'm looking for Japanese beetles, another caterpillar. We'll take a look. I don't like the signs of that. Also discolored leaves like this, the plants are starting to set fruit. So hitting them with some, uh, the, the one, one tablespoon of Epsom salt per gallon of water, that's usually a good way for, to help these set fruit. Um, it'll transfer the, uh, the nutrients better. But you can see the buds up here, just crazy buds. It's awesome. I'm gonna have a lot of beans. Look at them in there. Looking great. Looking really great. Now, bed number three is, was my garlic and my, um, my onion bed. You can see the remains of onions here. Uh, I have to say this has been a disappointing bed. The, uh, the problem is, you can see, this bed has been like through the blitz. The animals have really gone to town in this bed. And they've been digging in here, and I think they think the onions are nuts or something, but they've just decimated this bed. And you can see right here, just dug it up. You know, these are onions that have just been blasted. Oh, there's a monarch butterfly. Nice. Uh, but this poor bed has just been blasted. At the same time, the rabbits, I planted a few peppers in here once I harvested the garlic. This is a garlic plant. This is a volunteer garlic. Um, the rabbits have just been having a fiesta. Not good, not good at all. But I didn't put a fence up, so it's my own fault. We'll be doing that in the future. Uh, in this bed, I've got two volunteer tomatoes, actually three, so, uh, this is oregano, so I've got oregano and tomato plants, start of a good tomato sauce, I guess. And in this bed, I've got two tomato plants that need some good staking, um, a weed, a couple weeds. But uh, these tomato plants here are starting to get kind of healthy, so they need to be managed. Um, and I believe, yep, San Marzano, and I think this one is a cherry. So I'll need to stake these up and play with some trellises I've been thinking about for the future. Now my final bed here, I've got potatoes. I've got potatoes in, down in here, and there is a tomato plant that's kind of getting in the way. But um, these two beds were supposed to have potatoes in it, and the potatoes here just died out. So I threw some tomatoes that I had left in. So that's it guys. Rhubarb is coming along too. Really happy about that. These rhubarb plants are getting big. Um, that's the long and the short of it. Things are coming along here in the garden. Um, we'll start planning for fall crop. I will be really using this bed here for more experimentation with the vertical garden. I'd like to get some lettuces and greens in here now that that soil's been removed and the, uh, the basil is uh, gone with all the mildew. Um, I'm gonna try some lettuces in here to see what happens. Next up will be tomatoes, processing that for salsa and, and sauce. And, uh, and we'll see what we can do with the zucchini. I don't know if any will be uh, survive. But, uh, you know, thanks for following us in Small Scale Life. Uh, again, I'm Tom, and uh, we've got the Small Scale Life podcast. I've got a garden update there, talk about the same stuff. Um, I was out here with my recorder and just my stream of consciousness as I walked through the garden like I did today. Also had a interview with uh, Charles Hugh Smith, that was in episode 13, it's really good. And Bren Haas was episode 12, so go listen to those. 
Uh, it's on iTunes and also on the Small Scale Life site. Uh, please ch check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm putting a couple pictures up a day, and uh, it's going pretty well. So other than that, you know, please leave comments, share, like, and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Uh, remember, learn, do, and grow. Here comes another plane. And we'll see you soon in the garden. Thanks, everybody. Catch you soon. Bye.